After finding success with the Terminator, James Cameron once again took over another big sci-fi property and this time he took over in 1986 from the directorial hands of the great Ridley Scott with the original 1979 classic and gave us a great sequel in Aliens. And this time, it's war. What's up everyone, this is Joshua here. Welcome back to the Cameron Review Series leading up to Way of the Water. And we are talking about my favorite James Cameron film and the best movie in the Alien series. I have reviewed this before on the channel. That review is still going to be up, but just like with Terminator 1 and Terminator 2, this is going to be the official revisited review and that is for Aliens. So as I just mentioned, this came out in 1986, was written and directed by James Cameron, the second film in the Alien franchise, it stars Sigourney Weaver, Michael Bean, Paul Reiser, Lance Herrickson, and Carrie Hinn. After the success of Alien, Fox was not interested in doing a sequel right away due to lawsuits and years of waiting to develop and the lack of enthusiasm and repeated changes in the management, no one ever thought we would get a sequel to one of the greatest sci-fi horror films in Alien. So then, even though he was not in the experience, James Cameron, he was hired to write a story treatment for Aliens in 1983 on the strengths of his movies for Terminator 1 and Rambo First Blood Part 2 would be successful. So, then again, the project stalled, and once again, Lawrence Gordon came in to pursue a sequel. And so, for $18.5 million, James Cameron was able to make a sequel. Filming was tumultuous, it had conflicts between Cameron and the crew of Pinewood Studios. And also, this did affect James Horner at time, which this movie came out, got a lot of positive reviews. It's considered the best movie in the franchise, one of the greatest sequels ever made. And this movie got several Academy Award nominations, including one for Best Actress, at a time when science fiction was overlooked. I've already gave my little production history. That took longer than what it needs to be. But we're gonna talk about Alien. After floating in space for 57 years, Lieutenant Ripley's shuttle is found by a deep space salvage team. Upon arriving at LV-426, the Marines find only one survivor, a nine-year-old little girl called Newt. But even then, these battles harden Marines with the latest weapon they are no match for the hundreds of aliens that have intended the colony. Ripley, as well as Hicks, and a crew goes to investigate and they have to take down this group of aliens. The original Alien released in 1979, which this is not the Alien Anthology by the way, this is a 4K of Alien. I do want to get the Anthology because I heard there's a lot of special features eventually. It's in my wish list as well. Most people will say that Alien is the best one. Me, when people ask which movie is better do you prefer, the slow burn of Ridley Scott's original classic of this masterpiece or the fast pace of this movie. Some will say Alien. Some will say this one. Me, I'm in the Aliens group. I think Aliens is a fantastic sequel. And I'm not going to spend at least 25 or 30 minutes talking about this movie because you all know how awesome is this. If you ain't seen this movie, I will give away maybe one slight spoiler. So my review of this is gonna base on the theatrical cuts because it's the only version I have seen. I haven't seen the special edition. But Alien is what everything you want in a sequel to one of the greatest movies ever made. James Cameron with 18 million dollars he took everything that we know and love from the first movie and makes it his own and it works in the movie's favor because of it. 
Moving on to the positives. The first major positive is the story. It is excellent here. I like the story of Ripley helping a group of ace soldiers fight these xenomorphs while also having the story of Newt having to be saved by these guys and that is the biggest heart of the movie and that's the most emotional crunch. A lot more badass scenes in this movie is when people talk about aliens you gotta talk about Sigourney Weaver's Ripley. That is the biggest strength of this movie is the character growth of Ripley. After all the stuff she went through in the first Alien, this movie, she has bigger things to deal with. It's been 57 years, she's missed out on a lot of her life, missed out with time of her daughter, and she has suffered PTSD every night since that encounter, fearing that the Xenomorph is going to kill her. And you get, you feel that, you understand that motivation. Which is why she takes on this group of soldiers with some help to fight the Xenomorphs. At first, everyone thinks she's crazy, but then as the movie goes along, the soldiers, one by one, gets picked off one by one. And I love Sigourney Weaver's performance in this movie. She is great here. Talks the role once again. This, we see her in full boss mode where like, I am just tired of the Xenomorphs. I want to kill them. They need to die mother-daughter relationship that she forms with Newt is very heartwarming and if things didn't happen the way they did with Alien 3 which I do not hate that movie I know a lot of people do I don't love that movie either but it don't hate it things didn't happen the way they did with Alien 3 I would have loved to have seen where they would have gone with Ripley and Newt the mother and daughter bond between them is the most helps her recover from the tragedy of not being able to be with her own daughter. You feel that? I thought that was great motivation. I thought that was a great reasoning as to why Ripley wants to destroy these xenomorphs once and for all. And that is perfect motivation that you need. And Sigourney Weaver, it gives a great A performance. No wonder why she got the Oscar nomination for this. She's that damn good in her. Especially in the fight scenes in here, in the action scenes, they're really good here. But what about the rest of the cast? What about the supporting players? You have a great A cast in this movie. You got, of course, other characters. You got Bill Paxton as Hudson. He's boastful but panicky. Coronel Marine Private, he was great. You got William Hope as the inexperienced commanding officer of this team. Rico Ross as Frost. Al Matthews is a pawn. You got Vasquez, Jeanette Goldstein, Dr Drake, played by Mark Ralston, Paul Maxwell, Paul Reeser as Carter, a Whaling Utani Corporation representative, Lance Herrickson as Bishop, one of the best characters in this franchise, Android. You have Carrie Han, who didn't go on to act more. She went on to be a teacher after this movie. But for her one movie she did, she was great as Newt. She's, when you have child actors, it can go one or two ways. You can get the best performance out of them. You can get a terrible performance out of them. And sometimes you can get a very mixed at best performance. But I feel like her performance is one of the best child actor performances. It Hicks. Dwayne Hicks. The corporal. The guy. Michael Bean, once again, he is awesome in this. I love Michael Bean. Such an underrated actor. He's a great actor. He's very fun in this movie. So you have a stacked cast there. You have more Xenomorphs in this movie. There was a lot more Xenomorphs. You could tell they had a lot more budget to play with. The practical effects by Stan Winston and the special effects company they were able to get down and dirty with the xenomorphs the xenomorph especially the main queen herself looks just as great even double as awesome as she did in the previous movie and each of the aliens and xenomorphs they are scary but they're also pretty brutal they're pretty vicious they will pick they're picking off anybody in this movie and that's what i love about this Another thing you have to give credit to is the script and the direction. 
Now we know James Cameron, he's able to shoot a movie. He gets some great shots in here with some great action scenes, some great moments of dread, some great moments of tension. But he's able to get those emotional mother-daughter moments of Ripley and Newt down. Also Ripley feeling traumatized by not being able to be with her daughter for 57 years or being traumatized by her experience on Astronomo. You get that in general the direction, especially in his action scenes, no matter what you think of James Cameron, again, this man knows how to shoot action scenes. He doesn't quick cut, do, he doesn't do 14 chops every five minutes. It's everything down perfectly to its essence. And I very much admire that and I respect that. But the script is one of the best scripts ever. You have some amazing lines. There are so many damn good lines. It's over. Game over, man. Game over. What do you mean they cut the power? How could they cut the power, man? They're animals. <laughs> Just some of the most phenomenal moments. Some people will call this overrated because of how great it is. The one who says that is their opinion, but I just would like to poke a little fun at them with a few clips. Bad choice of words for a liar. So we cannot talk about the action scenes, even though there's some of the best action in this franchise. But my favorite action scene at the end of this movie, my favorite action scene is at the end of this movie with Ripley and the Xenomorph, where she's all powered up in the big suits and she get, gives the xenomorph to fight for her life as she's trying to save newt and she has the most iconic line in cinema history get away from her you bitch this is the true work of james cameron though aspects aside Editing is top notch. The movie is not too long, depending on which cut you watch. But even if I have not seen the special edition, the two hours and 17 minute theatrical version is great. There's not a single moment in this movie where I felt bored, I didn't feel checked out. Editing by Ray Lovejoy, he did a great job. James Horner. Someone who only had a few weeks to do the music, I feel like James Horner gets a great score down. He's really good in terms of that. And I really enjoy the cinematography by the late Adrian Biddle. And Adrian Biddle was one of my favorite cinematographers. He passed away shortly after doing V for Vendetta in American Haunting. But anytime he was able to shoot movies, you can tell his style. He did movies like The Mummy and The Mummy Returns, and Thelma and Louise, and The Princess Bride, and Willow, and 1492, and Judge Dredd. The man knew how to get some great cinematography, and may he rest in peace. Cause overall, Aliens is everything you could want in a sequel to Alien. It's bigger, it's better. Very on the top, you have incredible action, great performances, great characters. This is everything you could want from a sequel to Alien. And in my opinion, this is James Cameron's best film. And it's mainly this movie and the first Terminator, which gave him the creative freedom to do whatever he wants. Because after this, he will go on and make the movie The Abyss, which I've already reviewed. I'll just give my quick thoughts here. I rewatched it in preparation for Way of the Water, and it's still great. I've done a review of it on Letterboxd. It's his, one of his most underrated films, with an engaging story, some great practical and early stages of CGI effects, a sense of dread, atmosphere, and great performances from everyone, including Ed Harris, Mary Elizabeth Mestrantonio, and a villainous turn with Michael Bean as the villain. And for all of the production troubles that happened with that movie, it's a miracle that movie turned out as great as it did. My full review is on the channel from a few years ago, when I was supposed to do a big Halloween segment in 2018, you all know, I'm not going through that again. Aliens is simply a classic. And you're definitely getting the writing you deserve. Spider-Verse 
seal of approval. I love aliens. Eventually, I hope they put the rest of the alien movies on 4K because I want to see how great aliens will look on 4k i will also love to get the alien anthology even though i am gonna hold i'm holding on to this i would love to to eventually get the alien anthology so i can watch the rest of the documentaries on all of the other films but aliens a phenomenal sequel well that's gonna do it for this video if you guys like what you see here be sure to subscribe to my channel right here i have plenty more content as far as movies tv and anime and music goes i will also leave a playlist here and something here if you guys want to check out what i'm about join the epitastinus stay epitastic and you guys keep it cool